You see that man right there? Do you remember him? Hey, hey. No friends in the industry. I had to draw the line between my brothers and my enemies. Okay. Hey, let us start if you don't want to keep it rap. Yeah, you hit us up and now we owe you something back. Don't let him destroy everything you've built. Everything we've built. Welcome back, movie and anime fans, to my review of Creed 3, Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut and the concluding chapter of the Creed trilogy. This video will look a little different. If you're familiar at all with this channel, you probably expect to see my face at this point, but I have just moved to a new place, so a ton of things are still in boxes. I don't have a proper set prepared yet for videos as you're used to seeing them on this channel. So as for this video, you'll just be seeing clips and pictures of the movie we're talking about. And it's one I am very excited to talk about. So let's just get going with this review. Adonis Creed has retired as a professional boxer and, after dominating the boxing world, he has been thriving in both his career and family life. When a childhood friend and former boxing prodigy Damian Anderson resurfaces after serving a long sentence in prison, he is eager to prove that he deserves his shot in the ring. I am a big fan of the Creed movies. They're kind of this little trilogy within the bigger Rocky franchise that nobody asked for until they saw Ryan Coogler's reinvigoration of the classic underdog story. It managed to fit right in to the world of Rocky that we love, but it became its own thing. It carved its own path within this franchise. And this film very much feels like the concluding chapter to that thematic that has been present throughout this trilogy. It's not without its faults, and there's certainly real-life drama happening behind the scenes that I think, at points, affects this film. But overall, Michael B. Jordan proves himself a force of nature. Not just in the role of Adonis Creed, which at this point we should all expect, but behind the camera, he shows himself to be a really attentive director with great potential, but already greatly refined chops as a storyteller. Not only in how he pays attention to his actors, including himself, but how he really brings together these story components that really thrive and bring across the more emotional core of this film. Because now he manages to give a concluding chapter that does have a sense of finality, but he also manages to make it feel more personal than ever, as his boxing career is secure. He has his legacy that is set in stone. So this entire film is all about personal stakes, but they feel all the bigger, all the more dangerous because of that. And all the best Rocky movies have always done that. It's not really about the boxing. It's not really about punching someone in the face. That is how you get your anger, your issues out of your system. And that's the focus in this film. It's character. It's what Creed is going through, how his issues are affecting his relationships and past mistakes, and how does he own up and try to fix that. And one of those issues, one of those problems, one of the things that he's tried to run away from is Damian Anderson himself, played by Jonathan Majors. And I'm just going to plead to the movie gods to let the reign of Jonathan Majors over 2023 cinema continue. This guy just gets how to craft a humanistic, complex portrayal of an antagonist. Everything that proves itself an opposing force to everything Adonis Creed is, Damian Anderson is. This is a really tricky performance because Damien is a bad dude. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He is jaded. He is letting his emotions control his decisions and thoughts. But at the same time, Majors displays true vulnerability and the script never makes him out to be 
evil. He's a bad guy, but his feelings are legitimate. And Michael B. Jordan as a director doesn't really hold your hand to spoon feed you all the information, but he makes these characters so distinct and well-defined that you can logically fill the gaps and just see where things are going right before even the characters realize them. That is great storytelling. Where Creed had Rocky, Damien never had a good support system. Where Creed has Bianca, Damien never had someone to emotionally vent with. And that is what makes him such a great antagonist, is that he is the mirror image of Adonis Creed, not only in how they are dissimilar, but in the ways they mirror one another, where both of them in parts are still kind of the kids they once were when they were friends. But, personally speaking, that's not even my favorite part of Michael B. Jordan's direction and general storytelling. I had to lean on my, uh, my love of uh, Japanese animation and the themes of that to kind of make this one creatively and visually look different. He, as a director, wears his heart and his influences on his sleeve and allows it to bleed into the character, which all the more elevates those personal stakes within the story. When this film starts, you see a young version of Adonis, and he has a Naruto poster. And that's just a glimpse at what he delivers. Throughout this press tour, he has never shied away about his love and admiration for anime as an art form as a medium of storytelling that is so great and talks about so many themes that not only are present in this film, but have been present throughout the entire Rocky franchise, even before Creed. And there are incredible moments in the fight sequences in this film. The raw power and charisma from both leads bring grit and earnest emotion to a personal story that is perhaps the most personal since the original Rocky, but the hyper-stylized fighting sequences truly keep you on the edge of your seat. Michael B. Jordan has gone so far as to specifically name the animes that have influenced the visual style of this film. And once you hear those names, if you've seen any of these animes, such as Naruto, Hajime no Hippo, My Hero Academia, and specifically Dragon Ball, you will be drooling. I was yipping and yapping and I almost applauded so many times during the boxing matches. And again, the boxing is just a catharsis for all the emotional roller coasters that we go through with these characters. Michael B. Jordan understands that. This script overall understands that. And those fight sequences, those visuals that so harken back to so many great moments in some of the greatest animated stories ever told, really put the fight sequences in Creed 3 up above a notch of most other Rocky sequences, most other Creed fighting sequences. But it is not a script without its issues. I honestly think Michael B. Jordan's direction is so good because it elevates some of the faults of the script. And like we talked about earlier, there's obviously real world drama happening behind the scenes that may have affected this film because at times you cannot help but watch Creed 3 and feel like they're pulling a greatest hits where you see elements of a Rocky 3, you see elements of a Rocky 4, you see elements of a Rocky Balboa, all great films within the franchise, and they're still rather effective, again, particularly because of the direction Jordan gives it, because his focus is so centered on that relationship that drives the narrative forward. But there's a sense of, we've seen this before, we've seen this before in this franchise. And so when the emotional and literal punches hit, you feel them, but you also recall back to how you felt them before. My biggest issue, however, and it's more of a distraction, not really an issue with the script itself, with the way the film is written, but there are moments in this film where because we have Creed 1, Creed 2, and there's that relationship that is so vital to who Adonis Creed is as a person, to how far he's come, to the place where he is right now, that it feels odd that Rocky isn't in the film. It feels odd that Rocky isn't even a 
presence at all, an idea. Because in the first trailer, there's a voiceover that at least mentions Rocky. But that voiceover is not in the film. Rocky is not mentioned once. And that felt weird. There are two particular story points, one of them bigger than the other, that it just feels odd that Rocky isn't there, that Rocky isn't mentioned. Not even a phone call where you hear Stallone's voice and maybe he could have recorded it in five minutes over one day. It's just strange. But it doesn't deter from the emotional heights of this film, from the action heights of this film. And when those punches hit, you feel them in your stomach. There are so many great editing techniques where the camera will slow down and you'll see one character really analyzing the other, their movements and all that. Where it's not just a character seeing someone else fighting on TV and you see them focusing in. You're in the middle of the fight. You feel immersed. You feel like you're there in this ring with two dudes battling each other and you just get introspective with them. And how Michael B. Jordan captures that and elevates what could have been any other ordinary boxing match, it's magical, honestly. And so, as I dive into my final thoughts on Creed 3, don't forget the fun part, where you start a conversation in the comments below with your thoughts on Creed 3, the entire Creed trilogy. Honestly, let me know your ranking of the entire Rocky franchise, anything and everything down there. And if you're enjoying this review, even though it's not standard, you don't see my face, you will see it very soon again. If you want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies, anime, and TV. Creed 3 is an absolute knockout directorial debut for Michael B. Jordan. At times, a greatest hits mashup, but nevertheless effective for it. Towering work from Jordan and Majors, topped by emotionally punchy, immaculate fighting choreography. It's the greatest live action anime movie ever made. I'm giving Creed 3 a B. Certainly one of the best movies of the year so far for me, so I hope it is for you too. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts on Creed 3 and all the other Creed movies. Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel, and I'll be back very soon with normal looking videos. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.